Hello, Actor Sage here on the Sage channel, and a little something came out today from the devs, and it wasn't just fixes. If you look directly out that door, you'll see what it is. No, I don't have a custom skybox on. No, that is not noise. This is the new default skybox. The devs have gone ahead and updated the old skybox, which was showing its age a bit. It was a bit pixelated, and, uh, well, you know, it could feel a bit uncomfortable, just the grayish, greenish matte of color. But now you can see we have sort of a mixed up, hmm, just grouping of different colors. I can see greens, I can see blues and grays. It's all very, very nice. It looks like you could go explore out there and find anything, and that's actually one of the main reasons they did this. They've changed this around because the exploration game mode is on its way, and soon enough we'll be able to just keep on flying out there for, well, forever, pretty much, and keep on discovering new interesting things. Ships pulled down from the workshop and asteroids randomly generated. But that's not all they added today. Another thing they added that isn't just looking forward as much as just making the game better would be these little things right here in front of me. You see these three little pedestals, right? Well, as I get closer to them, you'll notice, you'll hear something. Oh, nope, they seem to have unload. There we go. So you can hear that one's making that sound we just heard there. You see as I get close to that one, you hear it's making a beeping sound. And this one down here, if you get right up next to it, you can hear ever so faintly an alarm sound. Now, the way these are set up, these are new sound blocks that have been added to the game. You can see them right here. If you look in your menu, you can, of course, just search sound and you will find them. They're pretty simple. They're just a little speaker. They don't take, well, they do take a little bit to build, I guess, but they're the same for big ships and little ships for the most part. And if we were to go ahead and look at their settings, you can see I have all three of them and that's going from left to right. So you can see left to right. Don't know why I felt I needed to show that, but anyway, you can see the one on our far left that we had to get right next to. You can see it has a range of six meters, which is why we had to get pretty much right up to. You can see loop time here because I have it set to loop the sound that I've selected in this pull down for 30 minutes. You can see at the right there, there's 25 minutes left on that loop. And then if we go to the center one, you can see I had up the range a bit. I can up it more, and you can see it gets louder as we up it and bring it back down. Uh, that's because we we're closer to the because if you can hear it from farther, it's going to be louder where you are. That first one, you can see I rage that all the way up and we can hear it even though we're pretty far away from it. And then the last one down here was that whatever alert thing and I can up that. And you can see there you go and hear it. Pretty cool, the range works pretty well. What I did notice though is if we go up to this first one again and you can still hear it, right? So let's do stop, let's do play. You can hear it, let's do stop. Let's set it back down to let's say six because we know we could hear it at six and then do play. And of course we can't hear it right now but if we fly up to it, Nothing. If you can't, if you're not within its bubble of sound, basically, when it starts, even if you fly right up to it and it's still playing, you won't be able to hear its sound. I guess it's a glitch currently, but basically if you have this huge setup of alarms that are supposed to come on in this facility and maybe you can set these up to be controlled by a sensor or something like that for collision warnings or whatever else, or you walk into a base and you turn on alarms in different rooms, well, the person walking in wouldn't be able to hear those alarms if they are outside of the range of them. Even if that alarm's set to go for 30 minutes, by the time they walk into that room, it could still be going, but they're not going to hear it because they weren't within its hearable range when it started playing. So I guess it's a client side issue there, I, I would presume at least. Pretty cool though, though, you can see we range it up. We should definitely be hearing it. You see the loop time at the right there has dropped down to 29 minutes, so it is still playing, but can't hear it because it started when we were out of range of its range and of course you can adjust its volume and all this is on the fly you can hear the volume changing pretty damn cool stuff uh there we go drop that down too there we go pretty cool stuff loop of course as i said you can set it to loop for a certain amount of time so if we wanted to have this go for just seven seconds as you can see there it counts down and it stops. Pretty cool. You see they do have other things here without loop timers. They're just single word things like and as well as and so I guess if you're trying to set up big missions you got a few of these. Then the alerts. Those are the one, all three that I had including this strange one at the end. Very strange that one. And then they have two music songs listed in here. They seem to overlap if I start them both, strangely enough. Yeah, in fact, I can overlap quite a few of these. 
this seems like these will stop each other, but these here, the music ones and any of these audio ones, because it's still playing a one single file instead of looping a small file like these, when it says, okay, don't play this one again, it, well, it's not going to play it again, but it's still playing the original file because it's a longer one, so look out for that if you try to play multiple musics. You can end up with some finicky stuff. Anyway, let's stop all that. Uh, so that's these guys. Again, you can set them up from buttons and sensors to quickly demonstrate that. We're going to go ahead and grab a button. Oops, I wasn't typing in the right spot. There we go. Grab you, stick you down here. And we can set up, have a button here. We can do, I think this is a center one that we're hearing. Actually, it might be the far left one. No, far left is the one we're adding. So this is the center one. And you can see we have all these options here. Stop, play. Increase volume, decrease volume, so you'd have a speaker that gets louder and louder. The farther away you get from it, if you have different sensors toggling it, like it gets angry at you for walking away or something. Pretty cool stuff. Increase and decrease range. All sorts of these that you would expect to see. And increase and decrease loop time. So, all pretty cool. And then, uh, toggle block on and off. There, there, really, I'm surprised there isn't, like, a toggle play and a toggle stop. Like, a toggle play stop. But, um... Toggle block on and toggle block on and off. Uh, yeah, unfortunately that doesn't seem to be. I'm assuming... Oh, no, that does work. Let's see, really quickly doing that. This is block two we've been fiddling with. It's So it's turning it off. It still keeps its prog progress on the timer. If you go look at block, that spawn again, you see it's still at 22 minutes. And then I'm assuming that won't count down because currently the block's off, but... Turn it back on. Indeed, it does count down once it's back on. And you see its original loop time and every all of its settings are still kept. Pretty cool stuff. So turning blocks on and off, that'll work pretty well. But I remember if you're outside of the range of the speaker, like right here, we can't hear it at all. If you were to turn it on now and then fly to it, even though it would be playing sound, you wouldn't be able to hear it. So a little issue there. Now, another thing that should be pointed out as I had said they're preparing for exploration mode. That's the whole reason why they have this awesome new skybox. Which, by the way, you can still sort of see the edges if you look right down there in the center of the screen. You can see the edges heading out to the left, right, and straight up. And you can actually see a little tiny bit. I'm pretty sure that's the edge. It looks it. But it's much better than the old one. Because the old one had sort of dark spots in their corners that really gave it away. So this one's much easier not to notice the edges, even though you can still see them. I need to see some weirdness along the edge sometimes where the stars seem like they get slightly cut. Can't quite find them right now. There's a little bit right there, dead ahead, that blue there, cut. Anyway, the reason they did put in this nice new skybox, which is pretty damn great, is because of exploration mode. And, well, they're not just doing updates on their own. They're actually asking for everybody's help. Because if you've watched my previous video, you know that they're planning on using ships and structures from the Steam Workshop and actually loading into everybody's world dynamically. Well, today they actually put a little post up on the official Keen Software House forums, and I'll, well, I'll read out some of that to you guys. As you know, we are preparing for the exploration feature that is going to be added in one of the upcoming updates in Space Engineers. You can find out more on Merrick's blog post. And we would appreciate your help for this. What we need from you is to send us links to your Steam Workshop ships that you believe could work in exploration mode. Now, what they're asking for here, and I'm no longer reading that out with slight tweaks, is your ships that don't use a bunch of mods, that don't use any mods to be more exact, ships that are survival friendly, which means they have all the pipes and stuff inside of them to actually function in survival mode, can be refueled and all that. And ships that aren't ultra big, they don't want things that are gonna lag everything. Performance friendly, I'll, I'll go ahead and read out the specifics of what they say here. So what workshop works are we going to put into Space Engineers? Small and large ships, asteroid outposts, hidden stations, mining operations, semi-automated drones, etc. Only performance-friendly works. Blueprints are preferred, but that does mean you could submit a link to there, to them that is just a old-fashioned world, but they really want blueprints. Only ships that are survival-friendly, well, like I was saying earlier about having conveyors and reactors and all that stuff, don't, don't give them a nice ship that's survival-friendly that only has one reactor once it's got 40 thrusters, though. Only ships that are not using mods, as I said, they're not going to take your ship if it's got mods in it. Ships that can have item blocks 
or ships can have items in the inventory. So if you like, you can go ahead and set something up there onto the Steam Workshop that you want them to use and have its inventories crammed with guns or whatever. If it's a military transport, if it's a cargo carrier, maybe have ore or other little things. Whatever seems like it fits. And also, of course, if you've got turrets, you should probably have a lot of ammunition in there. And every person can submit as many works as he or she would like. So, if you happen to have 500 ships that meet their requirements, go ahead and submit 500 ships. They might be a bit pissed at you for submitting 500, but, you know, they don't have a limit, so go ahead and submit what you like. And then, guys, that's it for today's update. Please know that submitting their ships, or a ship to them, should be done on the Keen Software House forums. I will have a link down in the description below, so you can go ahead and click on that to get there. You will need an account on their forums to post, but just post a link to your Steam Workshop file there, and probably want to give them a small description of it, or at least a name. And, uh, yeah, I believe that's it. You have until December 15th. That's Monday, December 15th, to posters there, so three to four days. And that's it. And that probably means Exploration Mode might even be coming before the end of the year. That's pretty damn awesome if it does, and even if it doesn't, you can tell they're working on it pretty damn hard. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're as excited for the future of this game as I am, because... They're sure as hell doing a lot of great stuff, especially recently. It's like, oh, they're starting to do the things I've always wanted. <laughs> anyway, guys, sorry if that was a bit too loud. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys next time.